Hey all types here, back Planet and more Planet Zoo, and it's been an exciting week in the world of Planet Zoo. So we have our long-awaited, much-anticipated North America pack DLC, uh, and it's super cool. I was lucky enough to get early access to this, uh, but I thought I'd avoid the. I thought I'd just kind of avoid the the big kind of uh, high energy launch day thing this week this time. Um, and just kind of leave this in its regular Saturday slot. So episode 10 of Tigwadoo Zoo. As you can see uh, from the thumbnail on the title, we're starting with the Prairie Dogs this week. I'm hoping that there'll be another one along fairly soon. It's quite a small little space. Uh, you'll Obviously, you'll see this again in the real-time tour. We've been like, two episodes in a row without any animals. And hopefully the next few are going to be animal animal heavy. So... Uh, yeah, and I thought I'd start with these little guys because the big the big ticket stuff, I'd say the moose and the beaver uh, are probably the ones I'm really excited about. But I've done a bit of a sketch out of what I want the rest of Tigwadoo to look like. Uh, fairly rough, but I think it's a rough guide of what I'm going to go for. Um, and I think the moose and the beaver are probably going to be right down the bottom of the hill. If you remember... At the bottom of the hill, we have the um, the waterfall coming down, and I haven't got anywhere where that water goes yet. Um, and I think that would be a great place for probably the beavers and the moose down there at some point. So yeah, we're a little bit way off of that. So there's going to be a few habitats going in before that, definitely. Um, I was tempted to do a one-off habitat build, but I thought I'd focus. Yeah, I thought I'd focus on Tigwadu because yeah, I'm in a bit of a groove with it at the moment. Uh, sort of ebbs and flows. I think most people that play Planet Zoo feel that way, that you kind of ebb and flow with your your energies with the game. Yeah, creativity is something that's quite difficult to come by sometimes, and um, I definitely have I have waves of it. And so when I'm kind of inspired to play or inspired to play on a particular project, um, I'm trying to kind of stick with that. So yeah, you can see this one coming along. I'm reusing the rock set. Uh, that I've got down at the bottom of the valley there in Seal Beach. Um, so this is a this is like a sandstone set that I built a while ago. Uh, I adapted it there a little bit, um, and you can see that I'm reusing some of those kind of features that I've got in the Aardvark and the Meerkat habitat. Uh, and it's a bit of a challenge actually this one because I'm trying to make it trying to keep it s sort of fairly small, but. Um, move down the hill uh, you'll see this more in context as we go on but so I started off I thought the idea would be cool I just looked, at, looked at quite a few references and something that I've not really done before um, but something you see quite a lot in zoos is this sort of raised habitat where your um, your guests actually kind of a, a lower level the standing position of the guest is actually a, a lower level than the floor of the habitat so that's what I'm kind of going for in this one. And actually, I think in probably a few of these next smaller habitats. Um, so you'll see, as I said, you'll see this better as we as we do the tour. But um, yeah, the front facade of it is all kind of raised up um, and is all kind of going to be rock work. So at the moment I'm working here, I'm working on this kind of back section uh, and I've put in this like implied side access something i'm trying to kind of try to keep in mind when i do these is semi kind of have a a level of realism where even though the game doesn't let you have more than one access point into the into the habitat i think it helps to certainly helps me when i'm building something to think about how it like realistically would function so that little side gate there is how the keepers would get into the rest of the habitat the main gate itself is actually hidden in this building this back building uh, so we're borrowing borrowing some stuff that i've built before that i built in the previous episode these little bits of um the railings and stuff it's something that's quite useful to do it's obviously a bit of a time saving exercise but it's a little benefit for trying to keep things looking consistent uh, if you reuse things that you've done before so you know if you reuse some of that caging uh, but also reusing some of this kind of backstage, this backstage look. Uh, this is all stuff that is totally behind um, the, the stuff that's visible to the guests. So it can all be, and you know, it should all be, a lot cheaper looking and a lot more kind of 
basic and functional kind of utilitarian sort of stuff uh, rather than the things that kind of look expensive and, and so you, you can see there's kind of this total facade there where you know you get the whole kind of really dressed bit of the habitat and then right behind it you get these kind of functional cor concrete and um, corrugated iron buildings so this is going to be their shelter I did a bit of detail in started working on the inside of these roofs I actually for this one used as you can see I used the the pre-built um, roof section there but I didn't kind of in this one want to mess around with the roof too much so I just kind of sealed it in with this ceiling um, as long as you put some beam work in and these sorts of things again it sort of helps to think about how that would look in a building and and you know think about how it would actually be supported i don't spend too much time looking at references and things i think i just kind of in my head try and think okay well how would that actually work like if, if you think about like a roof like that um like what would what would you see on top of it you'd see like a capping piece like this um and i'd sort of go with that to an extent um i realized when i did this one that technically this this whole kind of tri peak roof or gabled roof probably wouldn't really make a lot of sense, um, but you've got to work within the limitations of the pieces, I guess. So, yeah, you're starting to sort of see this one make sense now. You've got this back section, the prairie dogs come up and out off the top of that ramp um, into guest view, uh, and so they've got this whole kind of concrete background area. Um, and just trimming this out, something you see quite often in these. Um, when you do see references of, of animal habitats in zoos, they quite often have bits that kind of protect the walls. So, yeah, because something like that is easier to replace. For example, that, that chipboard, maybe not the right material for this because maybe they would gnaw on it and stuff. But, yeah, I think it worked out all right as something that just kind of breaks up the, the concrete inside. A bit more detail in the roof. Didn't spend too much time on this. Um, and then I started working on this, and there's something that I really wish we had more of. These animals are really small. Um, and actually, I think they said that these were going to be smaller than the, the meerkats, but they're pretty comparable in size. And actually, their hitbox, I think you briefly see me do this in a second, but their hitbox is very similar. So that's me. I'm trying to look to see how... I'm trying to make it a little, like, hutch thing, but I'm like, it's got to have a massive hitbox because they've got that... Sort of coded into the game is that the fact that animals need to be able to rotate around their every axis at every point. So as they go through that door, they have to be able to rotate. So it doesn't matter how kind of narrow the shoulders of the of the prairie dog are, as long as the if the length of the you know the body of the tail is longer than the gap you've got, they won't be able to pass through it. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a frustrating thing. You can't really get around it with the the little tunnel piece either, um, because you need still have they still have to be able to walk in it uh, in order to get it, it calculated in the traversable area. This is a bit frustrating. I wish there was a way around that. It would be cool to be able to see some you know little night boxes and things that we could use, even if they just kind of went into it on like a pre preset animation or something. I think that would be pretty cool. Anyway, getting into the rock work now. So as you can see, I've I started with this this mud texture just to really give me a base that was the slope that I wanted to go go to. Um, and I had quite a few times come down to you can sort of see the peeps there. Look, come down at guest level and looked at the angles um, of how this was going to work. And it was yeah the idea of this being that wherever they are in the habitat, whether they're front or the back, that you can see them as a guest. There's only like a couple of places they can hide away and obviously they can go into that back section if they want to. Um, and then I've got a little side axis way, as you saw me working on earlier with that other gate, which I've got to kind of hide off from the guest. So you can see that, that, that from the guest view, it's not very visible that there's another section back there. Something I also wanted to do, um, and I've seen this, a couple of people have done these, uh, something you see quite often in these sorts of habitats in zoos is these sort of viewing domes. Fortunately, we don't really have anything that meticulously works. We don't have anything that's a clear glass dome uh, or a, you know, like a... We have the, 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 the bubble piece, but it doesn't quite work as well. So I decided to make this little... It's all kind of implied. No guests will actually obviously go down there, but 
this little box that's a viewing box and I've, you can see I've put the little log tunnel there at the end of it uh, with the idea that, that probably a kid, although uh, an adult could get in there as well, it could crawl through this little space and pop up in that little that little viewing hole. So again, going a little bit too far probably with this, but you know, thinking if someone was crawling around on the floor in there, they'd probably want it to be carpeted. So, you know, put some carpet down, put some uh, some basic like chipboard facades up just to kind of make it a bit nicer space uh, in there. And yeah, I suppose to just be that obviously that they'd they'd crawl through, pop up in that little hole, it, almost like a little periscope point. Um, and then be at kind of eye level with the the prairie dogs. As I said, it's something you see, but doesn't really, it doesn't. I see, it would be cool, but the, the guests and I and I tried around for a little while with like, could I just put a guest stranded in there? But um, yeah, they don't really work because they wave their arms and everything, and they just look stranded. And it doesn't quite look right. Uh, so yeah, doing a bit more path work. The path was. Path work is actually way simpler now. You'll see me do something in a second, which is a real godsend, actually. The 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 new barrier pieces we have. Um not I'm not sure they're intended for this, but they make pathing way better in the game. Um so previously, as you can see here, I had to sort of make sure that my path was kind of um you know, all kind of sculpted around the, the pieces and then you fit the pieces around the path. Now you can really be a little bit more flexible with the path. So I've actually got path underneath this mulch, mulch section. And previously, um, even though there's not anywhere for them to go, the guests would have just wandered in there. Occasionally you'd see them wandering in. Same with these posts. I've got these posts sitting on the path. But what you can now do with these with these barrier pieces is you can use the, the barrier piece to actually kind of block off sections of the path. I'm a little bit concerned that it may end up being um, a bit of a loading issue because you've got a lot more things to calculate and stuff. We'll get to that in a second. So just do a little bit of a trick here with the uh, getting these, these bins right. These are bins that are not going to get used. But, um, but yeah, you can see here. So I've got quite a lot of path now overlapping into the habitat um, and when I was doing this originally I was like oh this is going to be a real pain but then suddenly realized that these new barrier features or these new kind of um, I'm quite sure what they're called the fence pieces I guess the fences and the curbs yeah so here we go so if you sink these right down um, I don't think you actually need to flip them over but if you sink these right down underneath the path the guests won't cross them um, so this means you can really, in theory, I think that means you could probably just cover your whole zoo in path and build over it and then put the barriers in, the fences in to, to actually establish where you want your guests to move around. It will be interesting to see how well that performs, whether that ends up being a thing that becomes a problem. But I'm going to try and um, I'm be trying to not use that too much, just on the off chance. Because I remember in the last patch we did see, um, yeah, you get occasionally the more complicated you make the paths, the more likely you are to get guests stuck. Um, and I already have a few places in Tigwado where there doesn't seem like there's anything wrong, but guests just get stuck in the little spots. Um, yeah, so adding a little bit more detail to this, I started started using this kind of wood texture. I think the wood texture works quite well with that that faux stone. Um, I didn't want the stone to be everywhere. I felt like it just needed breaking up a bit. Uh, yeah, and then this is the bottom of the little steps, actually. So I started working on a... I'm pretty much done, actually. I think I'm pretty happy with the way this turns out. But a bit of a kind of welcome board, like a bit more of a proper sign, because we don't have massively anything as we come into the entrance. Uh, using Ricey's amazing fonts again. All credit to Ricey for this amazingness. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to do something... Uh, that, that just was a bit more of a like kaboom welcome to the zoo so yeah not loads to this and then I can't take credit for this idea either this is also this was stolen from Estan Wolf uh, using these the actual Australian things to do a bit more detailing anyway peeps join me again any minute for the real time tour and you'll see all the details right welcome back to the tour so Zoo is closed, so you are getting exclusive behind-the-scenes access right now. 
Now we're starting just at the top, just next to the gift shop, just next to the back back of the meerkats. Uh, coming down the hill, obviously the big gaps and stuff here, but I thought I'd just show you this in context because I think it's starting to come together. It, start, it was feeling a bit disjointed before, but I think it's now starting to get there. Uh, so we come down the meerkats. We'll come down past the meerkats. And that's the first view you get of the of the signage. So if you can kind of stretch your imagination a little bit that this is all filled in, obviously you'll still be able to see somewhat that backdrop. Uh, but I think you're probably starting to lose it by the time you get to about here. So yeah, that's the that's the gate that we added off to the loading dock and the vet surgery and all that sort of stuff. We'll do a little bit of a look over there because there's some changes over there as well. Uh, but yeah, I think this has turned out all right. As I said, you can now do things like stick things in the middle of the paths. This is all surrounded by barriers, so the guests shouldn't hit that. There's my new sign. It's pretty simple. I think it works all right. Um, and yeah, so far I'm really liking the contrast of this, the wood and the and the stone there. Um, I think it, yeah, I think it works pretty well. I still got a couple of signs to do here. I'm working on those, but they they won't be ready for a little bit. And there's my little dudes. So yeah, it's pretty simple. It's a pretty small little habitat, really. Um. The one thing that they don't do because they're up in that elevator. But oh, look at that little guy! <laughs> Playing with the balloons. They're so cute. Yeah, the one thing they don't do is because they're up at this kind of elevated position. Because this is not the ground. Um, is they don't do their their burrowing and stuff. Um, which I could probably fix. I could probably raise some of this terrain to get them to do that. But I think that's working pretty well. I think that's feeling like a real habitat. I think if we have a few of these kind of dotted around as we go, so I've got the start of one on the left-hand side here, and I think we'll have a couple more coming around the corner. Um, so yeah, here's my kind of, let's see how this works out. What's going to happen when I put my head in here? It's probably going to put me up on top, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well. There's my little, <laughs> there's my little burrow. My little, my little piggy hole. Uh, I made that the one-way glass. So I might change that actually. Just to... I'm still playing around with a few ideas as to how I could get a suggestion of a person in there. I was playing around with, as I said, I was playing around with trapping a guest. The trouble is the guests jump up and down, right? So it just doesn't look right. They jump up and down and they put their hands up and stuff. Um, a staff member maybe I could hide in there. Actually, that might work better. I'll see if I give that a go for the next episode. So, yeah, these little cuties doing their thing. So, let's go around the side here. Um, so, they can get all the way back here, but this is all obviously um, supposed to be past this gate. is obviously out of bounds for them. They can't come through here. If we come down this step. So, this is how the keepers... There's this implied uh, access for how the keepers would get up and clean the rest of the habitat there. So I did a few little details, some little cages and things just for moving them around. Can we boop our way through this gate? Yes. Um, and then this is the back. Obviously this is you know, not finished on that side, but back entrance. Oh, I hadn't actually realised you get that view. I never actually noticed that view. That's kind of cool. Is he walking? Oh, he is. It's a weird sort of perspective of him walking. It looked like he was just walking on the spot there. So let's poop our head through here. Hopefully it doesn't put us on the roof. So inevitably I ended up on the roof there. But So here we go. Oh, he's actually he's in his little nesting box. Yeah, so that's kind of cute. That works all right. It's a little bit of a shame that they do... They do the burrowing mechanic in here where the one place I don't want them to do it. I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't want them doing it outside anyway because that's all kind of rock. It would look even weirder. I think I'm all right with this. So, yeah, we've got a couple of sections. The little This is supposed to be their night boxes. They just get shut in there. Um, and then there's another little, as you saw, another little section here for them to be sectioned off if we need to. So that, that in theory, that pushes across. Yeah, so they come up there, come up the ramp, out that door. 
uh, off to the rest of the the exhibit. And yeah, so there's the pathway coming down from the backstage. So I did a little bit of a did a little bit of a change here. So well, that was nicely on time. The keeper comes down, makes his way down the stairs. Picked up a couple of his little buggies from the workshop. They're very cool. Added those in. So let's do a little flyover. So yeah, I think we're going to keep. I think we're going to keep them to sort of small habitats. I think we'll have another one here and another one here, and then the path is coming around a corner. And I'm not sure if there's going to be habitats facing this way or further down. Basically, the path is going to snake down the hill all the way down to the bottom. But that is that one. Uh, thank you very much for watching, Beeps. Uh, as I said, if you haven't picked up the, the new DLC, uh, I think it's seven ninety nine UK dot UK um, and nine ninety nine. US dollars at the moment is a really good pack um, all the animals are, are really really cool um, thank you very much for watching my name is Toves do not forget to like and subscribe it's free for you to do but it really helps me out and I shall catch you guys on the next one take it easy